A historic primary election today in Michigan with a record number of absentee ballots cast. State holding an election in the middle of a pandemic, but tonight Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson is calling the election a success. Here, though, is why we're waiting on results in most of the key races. The state says more than 2 million absentee ballots were requested and more than 1.6 million of them were returned. That breaks the record by 300,000, and that was set in the 2016 presidential election, not a primary, in the presidential election. So now to where we stand in some of the key races at this hour. Nearly half of the vote is in in Oakland County. Dave Coulter leading Andy Meisner in the race for county executive in the Democratic primary. The winner of that race very likely to take on Republican Mike Cole. And one of the most heated races leading up to today, the Republican uh, primary in the 10th Congressional District that will most likely decide who will succeed Paul Mitchell. And right now it looks like Lisa McLean with an early lead over Shane Hernandez. In perhaps the most closely watched contest of the night, uh, certainly being watched nationally, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib with an early lead against Detroit City Council President Brenda Jones. Uh, I mentioned a lot of the votes still being counted. And in fact, since we don't know how how much of the vote is being taken up by the absentee ballots, mm -hmm. it's really uh, difficult to tell you what percentage of the vote has been counted thus far in so many of these races. It makes it a, for a very complicated night uh, for election watchers, among them Jason Colthorpe, who's live tonight, and this could be a while before we get the results, Jason. A long while, Devin, and I can tell you of the poll workers and precinct workers I've talked to today, they're talking at least 50% and sometimes 25% turnout from what they would normally have for a primary. And if you take a look behind me, a lot of the transfer cases still arriving of Detroit's 502 precincts here at the Detroit Pistons practice facility. You might recognize that face across the street, the Pistons great Earl Curitan welcoming some of those poll workers as they arrive here with those cases. They take them inside here and the workers here make sure that they are documented, they are sealed properly, and since 8 o'clock we've had a steady stream of those workers coming in, and of course it's all extremely important because of that race for the Congressional 13th District between Rashida Tlaib and Brenda Jones. With at least 1.6 million ballots cast by mail, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson feels good about the first run of a mostly absentee election. It's been, in my view, uh, both a great preview to underscore how ready we are for November, and also uh, it's given us an opportunity to identify where challenges exist, how we can uh, fill those, and again, prepare for November. Transfer cases carrying Detroit ballots from the precincts tonight were coming into the receiving board at the Detroit Pistons practice facility. City Clerk Janice Winfrey said they overcame a shaky start to the day. Some of the poll workers didn't show up, and I'm sure it's because they maybe had second thoughts um, and, and decided maybe it's safer if I stay home. But the poll workers that did show up, they just they just took the challenge on. Speaking of challenges, this primary is the third time Rashida Tlaib and Brenda Jones have faced off in an election. I think we're likely to go late. I'll be kind of surprised if we have a result tonight. Despite Tlaib's big lead in some polls and in fundraising, political analyst Adrian Hemond thinks there's a case to be made for both candidates to win the 13th district. Has Congresswoman Tlaib fixed the problems in her absentee voter? Uh, operation for her campaign. In 2018, she lost uh, absentee voters um, in both of those elections, the special and, and the regular. And um, she won election day voters going away. I don't think that formula works this year. Certainly not with so many people voting by mail-in or absentee. And again, I want to stress, I've talked to a lot of poll workers, precinct workers, just to ask their opinion how things went. And almost everyone uh, said things went very smoothly. It was just the turnout was a lot less than they'd seen, which goes to stand a reason with so many people going mail-in. Of course, the next benchmark with all of this will be how soon can they get votes counted and have results. Well, amongst the people out here, at least the media, they think the before and after mark may be somewhere around 5 p.m. tomorrow. A lot of us still taking the after, if you will, but we'll have to wait and see. For now, live Detroit, Jason Coulter, Local 4. We're setting over-unders here. And, Jason, when you look ahead to yeah. November, when we, of course, are going to be dealing with a higher turnout, uh, that, that really shows us uh, what's in front of us. 
It does, and you get a good sense of, people say everyone has a good attitude, not just the poll workers, but people at the polls who decided to go out in person today had a good sense of patience, were willing to be nice to each other, which mm -hmm. as for the last five months, we've seen how tempers can flare, but they think people are being nice and they're just trying to get through this process and they think it all bodes well for November when all of this will be ramped up even more. Yeah, sure will. All right, Jason. Now, well, so while we await uh, results in so many of these big races, we do have some contests that have been called. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell has easily defeated her Democratic challenger, as has Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence. And in the race to decide who will likely succeed, Justin Amash, who of course became an independent and then decided not to run again for Congress, Republican Peter Meyer on track for a big victory in West Michigan's third congressional primary. Meyer, the grandson of Fred Meyer, heir to the grocery chain fortune, but he will uh, have a de Democratic challenger come November. Stay with Local 4 and click on Detroit.com. We will continue to update these results in all the primary races just as soon as those results are, of course, available to us. Tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson will join us live to talk about any overnight developments, plus what her team has learned from the primary as we look ahead to that general election in November.